This sermon is titled Christ the Healer. Be enriched as you listen. All right, today is a supernatural Sunday. So what we do on supernatural Sunday is just share a very simple word of encouragement to our hearts and then we believe God, we pray, we believe God for healings and miracles to take place right here uh, in our midst amongst us. And also for those of you who are watching online, we believe God will touch you and minister to you right where you are. I just want to share a couple of testimonies that came in this past week. Um, both these testimonies are from people who have been watching online. Uh, so this person writes, uh, he says, I wish to share with you, I had been asking God for the gift of speaking in tongues to be baptized by the Holy Spirit for quite some time now. I never ever knew what the experience would ever feel like. I had no idea that this would come to me. While watching the service on YouTube, a little later on Sunday night, alone in my bed, while I was getting ready to sleep, towards the end, you know, Pastor invited everyone to ask God to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, and I did too. I prayed in English, spent some time while the video was playing, and everyone were praying, and suddenly, just opened my mouth, and the words came out. Words I've never spoken or heard before, and I couldn't stop my feeling of joy. I finally got into this to experience this. I was overwhelmed in tears and kept on praying in tongues. Such a surreal experience. I praise and thank God for showering me with this gift and wish to share this testimony with the church. Amen. So this person was watching the video, and was not even live, you know, later Sunday night, and thank God for, you know, God's, God's words alive, and uh, he ministers to people. Here's another testimony from a lady who's been, who's been watching. Uh, she writes, she says, I took my time to share and testify to God's goodness and healing in my life. I, I came to know about APC through a friend, and since then, my children and I have been plugged into the online service, kids' church, and daily devotionals, and the APC music. Uh, and so this is several Sundays back, uh, when uh, Pastor Nancy Ranmiya was here, she prayed for healing over a person who had radiating pain in the neck and shoulder. My acute pain because of fused vertebrae in my neck is gone. I am healed, praise God. There has been no pain since. I was in so much pain that I was taking medication and the doctors gave me traction and were considering surgery. I am healed and I have no pain since. Oh, amen. And then she continues, last Sunday uh, when we were praying, uh, I believed in my heart and had the most astounding experience in my walk with the Lord so far, to be blessed and receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit in exclamation marks. <laughs> it was a beautiful, indescribable experience. So thankful for the opportunity to connect online and be blessed. Amen? Wonderful. Thank God for it. Let's give God praise for it. You know, Thank God for these testimonies. I'm sure that you know, many, many more have been touched, ministered to through online, and also the service is happening right here in Perth for those who come in person. And um, we're grateful for those who take the time to uh, uh, write their testimony so we can share it. And people will you know, get to know this is what God is doing, whether right here inside the auditorium or online. Today, I want to just spend a few moments reminding us about Christ the healer, about Christ the healer. And then we're gonna take time to pray. A statement you've probably heard us mention often is that the Jesus of the Bible is the Jesus of today. Amen? The Jesus of the Bible is the Jesus of today. And we believe in a living Jesus. We believe in a Jesus who works wonderful miracles. And he is the one who meets the needs of the people. Just as we saw him, or as we see him in Bible times, as we read the Gospels, as we read through the book of Acts, uh, when after his resurrection, he was working through uh, the early believers. And uh, Amazing things happened. That same Jesus is alive. Amen? 
He's alive. And he still works miracles. And so it's only right for us that when we come together or wherever we are, uh, that we see those same miracles. We see those same things happen. And so today I just want to remind us about Christ the healer. And then we want to take time to pray right here. Those of you watching online, you heard these testimonies. Uh, that doesn't matter, you know, wherever you are, which part of the world you are connected to, uh, connected from. The Lord will meet you right where you are. Jesus will be Jesus to you right where you are. Amen? So let's be expectant. Let's expect Jesus to reveal himself. And there's nothing wrong with being expectant. In fact, it is necessary to expect. It is necessary to say, Lord, it's going to happen to me. You know, for me, I'm, I'm here, I'm going to see, I'm going to experience something today. And it's good to have that expectation because God honors that. He responds to the pull of faith uh, and expectation in our hearts. I just want to remind us of a few things about Jesus Christ. First of all, what we must understand is that Christ is the perfect revelation of God. In Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1, 2, and 3, it says, God, who in, at different times spoke in different ways through the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us through his Son. So Jesus is God speaking to us. Loud and clear. And nobody can say God never spoke. He spoke in his Son. God has spoken to us in Jesus. That means everything Jesus did and said and did is God speaking to you and me. Is God communicating to you and me, telling something about himself. And then it continues there in verse 3. It says that Jesus is the brightness of his glory and the exact expression, the exact image of his person. Jesus is the exact representation of God. So if we want to know what God is like, who God is, we look at Jesus. He is the exact e expression of God to us. And so he is the perfect revelation of God. And when it comes to sickness and disease, we must understand that Jesus, as we will see in a few minutes from now, Jesus healed every sickness and every disease. He healed every sickness, every disease, and he healed all who came to him. In Matthew chapter 4, verses 23 and 24, I want to read those verses to us. And you know, many of these verses are familiar. I just want to remind us of it so that our faith is encouraged as we get ready to pray. Look at verse 23 very carefully, Matthew 4. And Jesus went about all Galilee and teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of disease among the people. What did Jesus do? He healed all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. So he didn't filter it out and saying, you know, uh, those cases I can't handle, sorry. These cases I can handle. He didn't do that. He healed all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. And if Jesus healed all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease that day, he still heals all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease today. Amen? So I don't know. You know, Different ones amongst us, different ones watching online, maybe, you know, battling uh, different kinds of disease, problems, bodily ailments. Sometimes there are mental challenges, mental illness, and so on. But the Bible is very clear. He healed every kind of sickness and every kind of disease. All covered. Everything. So today, whatever your condition is, it's covered. Even if it is something novel, something new, something maybe they didn't know about earlier, it's covered. He's there to heal. He's there to deliver. He heals all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. And then verse 24 says, Then his fame went toward all Syria, and they brought to him, what are the next three words? 
all sick people. They brought to him all sick people. And uh, who were afflicted with various diseases and torments. And those who were demon possessed. Epileptics and paralytics. And he healed them. All sick people. Various diseases and torments. And he healed them. If Jesus healed all sick people then. He still heals all sick people today. Amen. No one is excluded. So today, I want to just encourage you personally. If there is something in your body that you're saying, God, I I just need to be healed. I've been struggling with this so long. I want to encourage you. You are included in in the number of those whom Jesus would heal. Whatever your condition is, it's covered. He's there. Every sickness, every disease. All sick people with various sicknesses and diseases. And he healed them. Matthew 12, 15 makes it even more explicit. It says, let's read it out if you'd like to. When Jesus knew it, he withdrew from there, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. He healed them all. Now imagine if you attended a service where Jesus was there. This would be the result. He healed them Oh, that means nobody comes in sick and leaves that way. They come in sick, but they leave healed. And all, he healed them all. And that's what we must pursue. That's what we want to say, Lord Jesus, we want to be in that day when all will be healed. Not a few, not some, but all. We want to see that. Amen? That's what we must Expect, And that's what we want to do even today. Matthew 15, verses 30 to 31. Very interesting verses about the healing ministry of Jesus. It says, Then great multitudes came to him, having with them the lame, blind, mute, maimed, and many others. Now think about that. Lame. Blind, mute, that means people who couldn't speak. Maimed. Maimed could mean that they had missing arms and legs. Parts of their limbs were not there. They were maimed. And they came to Jesus. I think it's a living Bible. I forget which version. I think it's a living Bible. It says, the people came to him with missing arms and legs and received new ones. It puts it very plain English. <laughs> Amen? It says, main people came. And then it says, and many others. That means people with all kinds of other diseases. And I'm just trying to imagine. They would have brought people to Jesus. People who were born with birth defects. And some of this obviously were blind and dumb, maybe from birth. People were born with defects. People were born deformed or with disabilities or whose growth, you know, development problems, whether physically or mentally. They brought all these people. They brought those who were demon-possessed. Just imagine this with me. They brought many others. And the Bible says here, he healed them. Would Jesus do the same today? Yes or no? Or would he say, well, you know, please don't bring those kinds of cases to me? No. They brought many others. They brought every person possible. And they all came to him in faith. And so everyone who came to Jesus in faith was healed. There were probably many who were sick, but out of them, all who came to him in faith received their healing. Whatever it was, physical, mental, emotional, demonic, oppressed, troubled, disturbed, whatever the condition was, they were healed. And the next verse is very interesting because it says here, 
in verse 31, Matthew 15, 31. So the multitude marveled when they saw the dumb speaking, the maimed made whole, the lame walking, and the blind seeing, and they glorified the God of Israel. What I want to highlight here is this. They saw. There's nothing wrong with seeing. They saw in front of their eyes the dumb speak, the blind see, the lame walk. Are you ready to see? Sounds like a pastor. <laughs> see what? <laughs> See the sick healed. Because the Jesus of the Bible is the Jesus of today. He hasn't stopped doing those things. But the question is, are we expecting? Are we coming with that expectation? Lord, I want to see right in front of my eyes. I want to see blind eyes open. I want to see the dumb speak. I want to see the deaf hear. I want to see the lame walk. I want to see people heal in front of my eyes. It says they saw. There's nothing wrong in see. We should expect, Lord, that's what we want to see in church. That's what we want to see when we're out on the streets. Wherever we are, because Jesus is Jesus everywhere, whether in here or outside. But we want to do it intentionally here because we come together in faith. We want to pray along those lines. But Jesus is not limited to the Sunday or Sunday service. He's the same, 24-7. But that's what we should expect. God, we want to see. We want to see these miracles. And I want you to be a person of faith. I want you to be a person who's courageous and say, Lord, I want to see. I want to see the blind eyes open, the deaf hear, the lame walk. I want the Jesus of the Bible to be the Jesus of today. Not some other Jesus. The Jesus of the Bible. Amen. They saw right before their eyes, they saw these things happen. Another thing I want to emphasize is that Christ healed on the basis of the cross. And I'm just refer referencing scripture here. I'm not necessarily reading that. Matthew 8, 16 and 17. It says in Matthew 8, 16 and 17 that when the evening had come, they brought to him all those who were sick and those who were demon possessed. And he cast out the spirits with a word and he healed all who were sick that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. Surely himself had borne our sicknesses and carried our diseases. So what these two verses are telling us is that Jesus healed because of what he was going to do on the cross. What was he going to do on the cross? He took our sicknesses and our diseases. So he was doing it in advance. So Jesus forgave sin and he healed people before the cross because he was going to do it. So he gave it to them in advance. But the basis of forgiving sins and healing sicknesses was what he did on the cross. He bore it. So today you and I are on the other side of the cross. The work is completed. We are here. Why do you and I say our sins are forgiven? Because Jesus bore my sins on the cross. He paid for it. He took it. On that same cross, Jesus took our sicknesses and our diseases. The problem in your body was taken by Jesus on the cross. Why? So that you and I don't have to bear it in our body. Are you with me? So it's on that basis you can say, Lord, I want to be healed from this. Just like you and I say, Lord, forgive me for my sins because Jesus paid for it. Same way, Lord, heal me of my disease because Jesus took it. What is the problem in your body today? Whatever it is. He took every sickness, every disease on the cross. He bore it. And that's the basis for you and me asking healing. Because he did it. Secondly, we also see that Jesus Christ, Christ healed on the basis of covenant. And here again, I'm referencing uh, Luke, the 13th chapter, verses 10 to 17. You find a woman who, was, who had a back problem for 18 years. She'd been bent over. 
Uh, she had come to the synagogue many times. But on that day when Jesus came in, he said, this woman is a daughter of Abraham. And so she doesn't need to be like this. Satan has bound her. And so he healed her. He, re- he got rid of that spirit of infirmity that had held her. Two things I want to highlight from Luke 13. First is, Jesus healed her on the basis of her being a daughter of Abraham. That means she was somebody who had a covenant with God. You and I have a covenant with God. It's the new covenant. It's the covenant through Jesus Christ. And if the Abrahamic covenant provided healing, surely the new covenant through Jesus Christ has healing provided for. It's in the covenant. Meaning it's God's provision for you. The second thing I want to point out is Jesus treated sickness and disease as a work of Satan. He didn't say God put her in that manner. No. He said Satan has bound her. And you and I must treat sickness and disease, all sickness and disease, in that same manner. This is not the work of God. This is the work of the devil or whatever other reason it came from. But it's not from God. It's not going to be in my body. Amen? That's what Jesus said. Satan has bound her these 18 years. But she's a daughter of Abraham. So she has a right to be healed. And on the basis of that covenant, he healed her. Today... When you and I go to the Lord for healing, we go on the basis of that same covenant. On the covenant that Jesus gave us, the new covenant. We go on the basis of covenant. We say, Lord, I'm in covenant with you. You are the covenant God. And in your covenant, in your promise to me, healing is provided for. It's a provision. It's yours. Jesus, or Jesus healed in response to faith. So when you look at the Gospels, very simple. There's one thing he required of people who came to him. Faith. Just believe. Believe. Many examples. In Matthew 9, you read about these two blind men. They followed Jesus. Somebody must have led them there. They came to Jesus. And Jesus asked them, do you believe that I'm able to do this? They said, yes, Lord. Then it says, he touched their eyes and he said, according to your faith, be it done for you. According to your faith. That's what we want to do today. Those of you watching online, right where you are, you and I, we are going to have faith. We're going to look to Jesus. Say, Lord, you took my sicknesses. Therefore, it it does not have any right to be in my body because it was taken away. I'm in covenant with God, and God's covenant provision is healing for my body, so I receive it. In simple, childlike faith, I'm receiving my healing. There were times, which we, you know, we just call it as exceptions, meaning there were times Jesus went and healed people when they had no faith. They had no clue who he was. But the majority was people who came to him in faith. They received their healing. And we want to be one of those who go to him in faith. Because we know who he is. And we receive our healing. He always responds to faith. The last thought, which is the base, simple basis of this message today, is that Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He hasn't changed. Even today, he heals everybody who comes to him in faith. He heals every sickness and every disease. Uh, Don't exclude any problem, any mental, physical problem. Don't exclude it. Jesus is healer. If you are in bondage and you say, look, you know, I've been in bondage, I've been this addiction, whatever the cause may be, you know, you may say, well, I've been in this because, you know, my grandfather was like this and my father was like this and so I'm also like this. That's why I'm stuck in the same thing. Whatever it is, there's nothing impossible for Jesus. Today is your day of freedom. Today, let Jesus Christ be who he really is to you your healer, your deliverer. Amen? Don't exclude anything. 
It may be a developmental issue. So, you know, children, especially children who, uh, their, their mental abilities have not developed the way it should. As parents, I stand with you. You might be in the auditorium, you might be watching online. It's not impossible for Jesus. He is the creator of all things. All things were by him, for him, and through him. And bringing that child in an instant to where that child is supposed to be mentally. And if there are any physical adjustments that need to be made, he can do it. Do you believe that? Yes, yes or no? Yes. Of course, he can. We just have to believe. If it's a physical lag in, in the physical development, he can do that too. He can fix it. So I want to encourage our faith today, whatever the condition is. Arthritis, maybe you've struggled with it for so many years, but today is your day. That spirit of infirmity will leave in the mighty name of Jesus. Any other conditions, skin conditions, problems with your skin, today is your day. Expect the Lord to heal. In his name, expect healing. Amen. There's nothing magical about this. We're just believing Jesus to be who he said he is. And nobody can stop us from doing that. Amen. So what we're going to do right now, you can remain seated. I'm first of all going to lead us in a prayer to receive salvation. What does that mean? It means to receive Jesus and the gift of salvation that he provides, which is the forgiveness of our sins and bringing us into God's kingdom and making us children of God. And again, he does that because he died for us on the cross and he paid for our sins. He was buried. He rose up again three days after his crucifixion and burial. That's an indisputable fact. And he showed himself alive for 40 days to his disciples and then he ascended into heaven and he's alive. That's why he works miracles. That's why there's power in his name and that's why he forgives sins. So I'm going to lead us in a simple prayer. And if you have never prayed and asked Jesus to come into your life, to forgive your sins and make you a child of God and bring you into his kingdom, then just follow me in that simple prayer if you'd like to. And as you look to Jesus and ask him to forgive you your sins, ask him, ask him to forgive you your sins, ask him to come into your life, he will do that. You're doing it in his name. Your life will be changed forever. And after that, we're going to take time to pray for healings and miracles. Now, the way we're going to do that, or let's do the salvation prayer first, and then we'll get into that healing prayer. Okay, worship team, please come. We will get ready to sing on the God that healed thee at some point, but you could just be ready. Let's pray. If you're here this morning, or maybe you're watching online, and you've never received Jesus Christ into your life. It's going to lead you in a simple prayer to believe in Jesus Christ. Nobody is forcing you. This is something that you can do freely by your act of your own choice. It's your decision, your personal decision. It's for you to receive Jesus and say, I'm going to follow Jesus the rest of my life. Just pray this prayer with me if you've never done this before. Just say this with me, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive my sins. Make me a child of God. Bring me into your family. Help me to follow you and you alone the rest of my life. I welcome you to be my Lord and my Savior, this moment on, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Anybody in this auditorium, 
You prayed this prayer with me for the very first time. We just love to see your hand. Anybody, you prayed this with me for the very first time. We just want to celebrate with you. Anybody here? I see one hand. God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else? God bless you. Anybody else? Just raise your hand. Okay. Our, our ushers will come and give you uh, what we call as a new believer's bag. There are just some resources there for you uh, to uh, grow in your faith, to learn about Jesus and grow in your faith. There's a little card that says decision card. Just put your name and number there. They will come and collect it back from you. And somebody from the office will call you and just share with you how you could use those resources. Amen. Wonderful. The Bible says there is joy in heaven over one soul that comes in. Amen. How about some joy on earth? Amen. <laughs> Thank God. Amen. 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 All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pray for people to be healed. All right. You see, there are many ways, many different ways in which God heals. There's not just one formula. There's no formula. Uh, God just heals because he's the healer and we are the people who need healing. The same applies to all of you just watching online. Just pay attention. There are many different ways. Jesus, you know, when in his healing ministry, sometimes he laid hands on people. Sometimes people touched him. Sometimes he touched people. Sometimes people touched him. Sometimes people touched the edge of his clothes. Sometimes he told them to do something, like stretch out your hand, or rise, take up your bed, or go wash in the pool. He told them to do something. So there are different ways, different ways. There's no fixed method. The only thing he asks of us is faith. And then he, he commissioned believers. He said, you go lay hands on the sick in my name, and they will recover. You go lay hands. So we just lay hands. There's nothing magical about these hands. Nothing magical. This is human hands. But it's in the name of Jesus. It's in his name. And when we do this in his name, Jesus comes there. Jesus comes there. It's his name. He comes there by the power of his Holy Spirit. And he ministers healing. It's nothing about the hand. He even said, you know, you anoint with oil in the name of the Lord and the prayer of faith will heal the sick. So we could do that. I didn't bring any oil today. Maybe we'll do an anointing oil service another time. But that's another way. You could put oil. We also know that when we partake of the communion, the Lord's table, is another way to receive healing. So there's so many different ways. Today what we are going to do is I'm going to lay, ask you to lay hands on yourself as a first step. When you lay hands on yourself, you say, I lay my hand in Jesus' name. So the moment you place your hand on yourself in Jesus' name, now Jesus comes there. You believe. And I'm going to pray from here. You lay your hand on yourself, which is a part of your body, and then believe God. If you are praying for somebody else, and those of you at home, you can lay a hand on your child, or lay a hand on the person you're praying for, or if they're somewhere far away, just mention their name. Say, Lord, I'm lifting so-and-so in Jesus' name. It's a very simple thing we're going to do. But it's in His name. And at the mention of His name, expect that the Lord will touch you. The Lord will do this. Nothing is impossible for Him. And then, thank God for miracles that happen as a process over time. You know, ultimately when people get healed, that's, that's great. If it happens over time, wonderful. We're not against it. And I understand that sometimes we just have to go back to the doctor. They may need to do some tests and scans and so on. And we, we support that. Go do it. But what I want us to expect is just the way it happened in the Bible. Like it says, they saw Right there, right then, they saw the blind see, the lame walk, the deaf ear, the maimed hole. Right then, right there, they saw 
demons cast out. They saw people healed right then, right there. And that's what I want us all to expect today. That God, right here, today, people will be healed. Because Jesus is here. And if that happens to you, I want to encourage you to leave your seat and come right up in front so that you can tell people what Jesus did. Boast about Jesus. Amen? Now I know sometimes people quietly take the miracle and go home. That's okay. I mean, we're not against that. But it will be wonderful if you leave your seat, if something happens to you right now, and, and you know that the Lord Jesus healed you. It's verifiable. Maybe there was a growth, and the growth just disappeared. Maybe there was a tumor. The tumor just disappeared. I mean, you can't question that. You can't doubt that. You don't need to go, uh, you know, if it was outside visible, you don't need to go get a scan. It was there, and it's gone. Then I just want you to come forward and testify. Say, this was what happened. So I want to encourage you to do that as well so that we can take testimonies right here, right now. Now, some of it I know will happen when you go home and then you could send an email and you can do that. That's wonderful. But let's expect that right before our eyes, things will happen. Amen? I remember this happened many, many years ago. And maybe I've shared it before with you. Uh, when we were in, the, in, in, in New Jersey, and uh, we had helped plant or start a bilingual church. It was English-Spanish. So Amy, imagine Amy to lead in Spanish. You know? So we had worship in English and Spanish, and I would preach in English. And so, you know, we had Sister Maria who would translate into Spanish. So we, were, we had a bilingual church. And I remember one in one particular service, and you know, we had moved to Chicago, and I came back there, back to New Jersey to minister one service. And uh, after the service, people lined up for prayer. Sister Maria was, my, was the interpreter into Spanish, Hispanic church, or mainly, mainly Spanish speaking. And one lady came up, she had a baby in her hands. Sister Maria knew the case. Because Sister Maria was working in the hospital, Robert Wood Johnson Hospital, very close by. Uh, she was in the social work, I think she was in the social work department, so she knew this case because they, had, they needed help financially. This baby had tumors on the head. I don't know how many growths, at least three growths or so. And they'd already spent $18,000 just to run the tests, to find out, to do the, you know, to make an assessment. So she knew the case. The mother brought the baby. I remember standing next to Maria, Sister Maria, who was interpreting. We prayed a simple prayer. Rebuked those growths to go. And then she went out. You know, we continued praying for the people, so I didn't check right there. But we continued praying. Finished the service, we dismissed. Sister Maria got into the car to take this family. They'd come from a long, another town, so they, had, they took the... The, the train to come. So she got in the car to go drop them off on the train at the train station. And in the car, she took the baby's cap off to feel the skull. All the tumors were gone. Gone. And I always look back. I remember that. I share it. Because it was not an accident. It was, it was real. It was like they were in the treatment. She was there. It was real. It's something they saw. They experienced. Amen. And like this, some miracles happen right then. Some may take a little bit of time. But I want us to expect what is your need. Believe God. Amen. And let's testify to his glory. Let's testify to his greatness. We're going to sing that song, I am the God that healeth thee. You can remain seated. Let this be a song that just encourages your faith and say, and make it your personal song. Or pray and sing it over somebody else. Maybe you know a friend or a family member who needs healing. As you sing this song, you sing it over them. I am the God that healeth thee. And you sing it over that person in the spirit. 
And right after that song, I'm going to ask us to stand. We're going to pray. I'm going to lay hands. I'm going to ask you to lay hands and pray. And then let's see what God does. Are you ready? Yes or no? Jesus is the same. Amen? He's a God of covenant. I am the God that he lived thee. Let's sing it, please. Sing this together now. I am the God that he left thee. I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my word and healed my disease. I am the Lord, your healer. I am the Lord that He led thee. I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my word and healed your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. You are the Lord. You are the Lord that He led me. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent Your word to heal my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. Yes, You are. Yes, You are. You are the Lord that He led me. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent Your word. You sent Your word and healed my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. Sing it now. You are the Lord that He led me. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent Your word and healed my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent Your word. And heal my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. Let's all rise to our feet, please. Let's rise to our feet. And let's rise to our feet. Just one more time. I am the God. I am the God. Just stay with that song. Just stay with that song, please. Just stay with it. I, I am the God that He led thee. I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my word and healed your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. Say I am, I am the Lord that He led thee. I am the Lord, your healer. You sent your word and healed my disease. I am not the Lord, your healer. Just lay your hands on that part of your body. You want Jesus to heal. Yes, Lord. Those of you watching online, right where you are at home, Amen. lay your hands on that part of your body. You want Jesus to heal. If it's you're praying for somebody else, you can lay hands on them if they are with you, or you just mention their name, or if you have a picture of them, you can put your hand on their picture saying, Lord, I'm praying for so and so right now. I'm just going to pray a simple prayer. I'm just going to pray from here. But Jesus is the healer. So you mention his name. You say, in Jesus' name, I receive my healing. 
in Jesus name I declare my body healed or if you're praying for somebody else you say in Jesus name I command that sickness that disease to leave so you pray in the name of Jesus father we thank you for the precious presence of your Holy Spirit and it is by the power of the Holy Spirit it is by the anointing of the Holy Spirit I declare in the name of Jesus Satan every yoke is broken every burden is removed Satan I send against you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I command your works broken I command your works destroyed remove your yokes remove Move your burdens and leave the people in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, let every work of the enemy be destroyed. Every yoke of sickness and disease on the body or the mind be destroyed, be removed. I come against every spirit of infirmity, every spirit evil spirit causing sickness causing disease causing pain in the name of Jesus I charge you leave now in the name of Jesus leave and let God's people be free every tormenting oppressive spirit leave in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit I charge you to leave in Jesus name Lord let there be healing taking place right now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus and if somebody's as a stomach area of what there's been the a, a bulge a growth and let that be let that right now let it just coming down to size shrinking right now in the name of Jesus Lord thank you thank you God receive your healing whether I call it out or not just receive your healing right now father we thank you right now in Jesus name that every sickness every disease be healed just as we read in the Word of God that you heal every kind of sickness and every kind of disease so let there be healing Lord right now let the river of your healing flow cover every person right now even those watching online wherever they are in distant parts of the world let the river of your healing touch them wherever they are and let them receive their healing in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Lord we thank you Lord we bless your holy name we bless your holy name spines that have uh, that, that have been crooked for whatever accident and then been uh, you know injured Lord let them be made straight let them come in a perfect alignment and be made straight in the name of Jesus God thank you for fixing those things for fixing those things Lord we thank you. We bless you. We honor you. We give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you praise. Now, I just want you to start checking your body. And if there's a, a healing that you can verify, just come on forward. There's a healing that you can verify. Some things you may have to go and check. You know, the Lord has honored your faith. And... Uh, you know, you, need, you may need to go and check, and that's perfectly fine. But if there's a healing that you can verify right now, just come on up and boast about Jesus. Tell us what Jesus did. We just want to know, right? So just go ahead. Anyone here? Just there's a healing that's verified right now. I want you to come forward and just testify to what the Lord has done. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, if you had a pain and maybe the pain's gone uh, or you couldn't move your arm in a certain way, but now you're able to do it, just go ahead and just come forward and, and testify of what the Lord has done. Check your body, check, uh, check yourself, take a moment to do it, and then come and testify to what the Lord has done. We want to see what the Lord has done in this place. I'm going to wait for a moment more. Does anyone here, you have a testimony? Just come forward. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody, you have a problem on your elbow? Uh, you injured your elbow. There's a pain in your elbow. It's there right now. Just come forward. We pray for you right here. Anybody with a problem with the elbow? Okay, I don't want to embarrass you, but got a pain right here. Anyone with that? Let's 
Just come on up and we'll just pray for you. You've got a problem right here. Thank you. Come on up. Yeah. Come on up. Come on up. Come. Thanks for coming. Come, come on. What happened there? Oh, sorry. An accident probably two years back. I yeah. fell down and then. Uh, All right. You had an accident two years ago yeah. and it's hurting. It's paining right now? Yeah, it was paining, but now I'm assuming it's still better now. It's still better, but let's pray for it to be completely better. Sure. All right. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. He had an accident there two years ago. Uh, what is it that you couldn't do? Like, so that right now we can see that after we pray that you are able to do it. I, I generally play tennis, so my it's Elbow? Pains, yeah, it's it hurts a lot. Well, we can't play tennis right now, but... <laughs> but, in Jesus' name, every injury on this elbow, we command it heals. We declare the whole in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 God bless you. I don't want to, you know, maybe you should go play tennis and test it out. Okay? Thank you. Thank you for coming. God bless you. Give testimony to Jesus. Give testimony to Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. All right. We, we want us to see the healings of God taking place. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God. So similar injury in your ankle. Maybe you had an accident there in your ankle, your right ankle. Uh, maybe you got crushed in an injury on here and it's hurting you. Just come on up. We pray for you right now. Uh, maybe you can tell us that the Lord has healed you right here, right now. Anyone else? Just on the ankle area. It's hurting you. Um, like him, you had maybe had an injury there. Come on up. Anyone here? All right, nobody's coming forward. Okay. So, what I want you, what I want you to do is... When you receive your healing, brag about Jesus. Send a testimony. Tell us what the Lord has done for you. Amen. And I want each of us, as we go out, when you find somebody who is not well, you pray for them in the name of Jesus. You minister to them in the name of Jesus. Command them to be healed. Command the bones to be healed. Command the injury to be healed. Command any spirit of infirmity to leave. You can do this because it's in the name. It's in the name of Jesus. Amen? And then you bring those testimonies as well. You send a testimony. And I had, an, I had a chance, to, you, may, you may share a testimony like this. I had a chance to pray for so-and-so. And the Lord Jesus healed that person. And we'd love to share that because it's Jesus working through his people. You and I are his hands and his feet wherever we go. Amen? Amen. Amen. Lord, we praise you. We glorify you. We honor you. We thank you, God, for every miracle, for every healing, for the testimonies we will have and receive. And, and God, we, we want to see things happen right here before our very eyes. We want to see people healed of every sickness, every kind of disease, just like in the Bible. We want to see multitudes coming into the auditorium, bringing their sick with them. They're demon-possessed, they're oppressed, they're paralytics. We want to see them healed right here before our eyes. Because the Jesus of the Bible is the Jesus of today. Amen? Let's close. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit with each of us always in Jesus name Amen 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 Thank you for listening we trust this message was a blessing to you for more free resources including sermons sermon notes publication please visit apcwo.org for information on APC Bible College in Bangalore please visit apcbiblecollege.org please remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the app or Google Play Store